DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, Jackie Cooper. Tonight's play, Ready on the Right. April 14, 1776, the dusty acres of Battery Park on the tip end of Manhattan Island, the sound of marching feet, a company of men that marches with snap and precision, that wheels sharply and smartly. This is the New York Provincial Company of Artillery, 68 effectives. In command, Captain Alexander Hamilton. One, two, three, four. Captain Hamilton, sir. Yes, true. May I have a word with you? Of course. Sergeant Corkins, take the company. Yes, sir. One, two, three. Well, how do they look, Robert? Well, if I were George the Third, I should sue promptly for peace. <laughs> you wanted to speak with me? Yes, sir. General Schuyler's on his way here. A review? No, this will interest you. He's determined to have the brilliant young pamphleteer, the estimable Alexander Hamilton, as his personal aide de camp. Aide de camp? Mm-hmm. Write his orders, keep his accounts. Well, that would make me nothing more than a clerk. Well, a fairly high ranking clerk, considering that it carries the title of major with it. I'm not interested. I should think that the offer of a major's commission at the ripe old age of 19 would be enough to attract your interest. Not mine. I want action. A field command. Nothing else. Oh, but, Alec, you can't. Why go waste on. time talking about it? It's probably a rumor. Well, that may be true, but unless I'm terribly in error, the rumor is riding this way right now in a white charger. Now, be gentle with the general, Alec, and mind your temper. Oh, oh. Captain Hamilton. Sir? Are you free this evening? At your service, sir. I would appreciate your visiting me. Perhaps joining my family and me for supper. Yes, sir. I want to discuss a matter that I'm certain will be to your interest. Be delighted, sir. Very well. We shall expect you. Rumor, Alec? Did I treat the general gentle enough, Robert? Gentle? Your use of the word sir was positively angelic. Until tomorrow, Major. Astonish me, Captain Hamilton. Not many young men would refuse a major's commission on my staff. Please understand, General. I'm grateful and very much honored by your proposal. But somehow, in this case, the promise of action in the field, getting into the fight, is something I can't turn my back on. You're a very strange young man, Hamilton. Don't, uh, don't you think so, Betsy? I think he is a man of mystery, Father. He appears among us suddenly from the Indies. He writes pamphlets at King's College, pamphlets with words that blaze. Then suddenly he lays down his pen and takes up the sword for liberty in these colonies. I, uh, I thank you for your penetrating biography, Miss Elizabeth. But of course you're quite mistaken. I'm no man of mystery, and I can prove it. Prove it, Captain? How? By confessing to a most human impulse. I am completely captivated and charmed by the general's daughter. Captain Hamilton. I, uh, I think the captain can put his time to better use than flattery. There's a campaign to be fought. And I intend to fight it. General Schuyler, sir. Miss Elizabeth, good night. Robert. Yes, Alec. I am so discouraged. Retreat, retreat, retreat. First Long Island, then White Plains. Now here we are in New Jersey. When do we stop running? You sure that's what's bothering you? What do you mean? Why don't you admit it, Alec? You're dead tired. And still you go on. No sleep, constantly driving yourself. You look bad. You're sick, and I... Robert, you... Robert. There they are. The Redcoats. They're trying to cross the Raritan. Sergeant Corkins. Yes, sir. Ready on the right. Ready on the right. Corporal Baggett. Right, sir. Ready on the left. Ready on the left, sir. On the right. Fire. On the left. Fire. Cease firing. Oh, it's no good, Robert. Our shots can't reach them. Well, what do we do? 
We'll get them from the hill. We'll set cannon one on top. You take cannon two. Trap them in a crossfire. Well, can we get the guns up that hill? It's pretty steep. Hawkins and the crew and I will force it up. You take Baggett and fire on my signal. Hawkins? Yes, sir. All right, you men, swing this gun around. All right. Come on. She's going difficult, sir. I'll help you. Come on now. Up the hill. All right, men. Right, men. Shove her. Harder. Harder. Captain, what's the matter? Captain, he's fallen. He's fallen. Hey, Captain, Captain Hamilton, sir. You all right? Lieutenant Troop. What's the matter, Calkins? Captain, sir. He's collapsed. <laughs> Well, I'm happy to see that my patient looks a bit more like himself today. Doctor, how long are you going to keep me in this confounded bed? Long enough to get some skin on your bones. Don't make any mistakes about it, Captain Hamilton. You've been a mighty sick man. Time there when your fever ran higher than one of Ben Franklin's kites. I don't intend to spend the rest of my days in this cot. I want... Is that a carriage outside? It is. Who is it? It looks like we're being honored by distinguished visitors. It's General Schuyler. Alone? No, no, I believe he has his daughter with him. Elizabeth. Yeah, that's the one, Elizabeth. Don't let them in here. I don't want to see them. I don't want any visitors. Sorry, Captain. This is no visitor. This is a general. Just a minute. May I come in? Why, certainly, Miss Schuyler. Thank you. Good day, Captain Hamilton. Miss Schuyler? My father will be along in a moment. He stopped to look in on some wounded militiamen in the room next to yours. I'll be glad to see him. If you'll excuse me, I must greet the general. You look well. Thank you. We were all shocked at the news of your... your... My collapse? Your illness. It was an arduous campaign, they said. But a splendid bit of soldiering on my part, wasn't it? At the critical moment of battle, my knees fold under me. And I'm carried off the field like a... A sick puppy. You exhausted your strength. It's perfectly understandable. I did no more than the others. Why didn't they collapse? Shall I tell you the truth, Miss Schuyler? Perhaps I can write, as you once said, fine phrases. But I have weak bones. I'm a weakling. I shall not believe it, Captain Hamilton. It's true. I just had a dream. I saw myself in the van, leading the charge. I was with the troops where I wanted to be, in the field of action. Drums rolled and trumpets sang. I stood in the parapet, an heroic picture, don't you think? Well, now look at my parapet. A hospital cot. Captain Alexander Hamilton felled in action. He was tired. You talk as if you were guilty of some horrible form of treason. I regard failure in this cause as treason. Oh, rot. You're entitled to your view, but leave me mine, I pray I'll you. talk to you very frankly, Captain Hamilton. You're a victim of... Yes, I'll say it, your conceit. You want to do it your way. Once you lose the center of the stage, you cry out like an infant. That's ridiculous. Look here, Miss... Be quiet, I'm not finished. It's time you realize that with all your talent, you're still part of the human race. You're subject to all its frailties. You said that yourself, as I remember. The last time we met, isn't that so? Yes, but... But saying it, you still didn't quite believe it, did you? Well, Captain Hamilton, you are human. You're brilliant and exciting and talented, but you're human. And I'm very glad you are, as a matter of fact. Because I am too, Captain. Right now, very human. Miss Elizabeth. Betsy. Betsy, do you always speak so frankly to men? To men I lie, yes. Oh, uh... I... Uh, Captain Hamilton. Uh, General Schuyler, sir. I venture that had you accepted my offer of a staff commission, I would not find you flat on your back. Possibly. You're well? Much improved, sir. Much. Good. I've come with a message to you from General Washington. Washington? You're ordered to his headquarters as soon as you're well enough to travel. I'm ready now. The general has plans for you, young man. I hope to return to my company. Oh, do you, sir? But I think General Washington has other plans. You are to be his aide-de-camp. But this is impossible. Not at all, Captain Hamilton, not at all. With General Washington, you have no choice. It is not an offer. It is a command. Hello! Hello, 
Orderly. Where is Colonel Hamilton? He's on his way across the parade ground, sir. He'll be here directly. Good. Good. General Washington, sir. Colonel, come in. Sit down. Yes, sir. The dispatches to General Sullivan. Sent off an hour ago by dispatch riders, sir. The report to Congress? Yes, sir. I have the first draft with me. The matter of the disaffected elements in New Jersey. I've sent a note to the governor requesting immediate action. Mm, good. Is there anything else, sir? Well, if there is, I'm certain you've already taken care of it. You're a very efficient officer, Colonel. Thank you, sir. But... Uh, yes, Colonel? Uh, I'm very grateful for all the evidence of confidence that you've shown since my arrival, General. But I still hope that I will be returned to my company in the near future. You are unhappy in my command? No, sir, but I would still prefer to be in the field. An officer fights best where he's best needed. You're needed here. Yes, sir. I have come upon a good habit. In the midst of pressure, harassment, confusion beyond belief, I have found a key to sanity. I merely say to my orderly, call Colonel Hamilton. I want you to know, young man, I depend upon you. That's all, Colonel. Carry on. Betsy! Betsy! Alec! Oh, Alec! Alec, what a wonderful surprise! General Washington asked me to carry some dispatches to General Gates in person. I have, and, well, this is in the form of a slight detour on my way back to Morristown. I must be back in headquarters without delay. Can't you even stop for a little while? No. I have only time for a, a, for a question. A very quick yet important question. A question? There are certain forms of etiquette which must be followed, I know. Letters of sanction to parents, which of course shall follow. But now, to you, this one question. Will you marry me, Betsy Schuyler? Oh, I... Oh. Do I have time for due consideration to so important a matter? No. Then you shall have your answer with directness. Yes, Colonel Hamilton, I will marry you. Soon? Oh, yes, very, very soon. Now, we return to our cavalcade play, Ready on the Right, starring Jackie Cooper as Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Hamilton, aide de camp to General Washington, and Miss Betsy Schuyler were married in Albany on the 14th of December, 1780. The first of the new year saw Hamilton back at headquarters, back at his desk, Back to the monotony and the grind of a job he detested. Colonel Hamilton, one moment, please. Uh, General Lafayette, I have enough thanks to talk to you about the matter of supply. Could it possibly wait? General Washington is waiting Only for Only a minute. I... I have prepared a detailed list of things I will need from the commissary. Uh, then there is the matter of powder. We are waiting on a shipment from France. Ah, French powder. Excellent. Colonel Hamilton. Yes, orderly, what is it? General Washington is calling for you. I'll be there directly. I'm sorry, General Lafayette, but among other things, it seems that I am chef, chambermaid, butler... Uh, no, no, let us be calm. Calm, I'm tired of it. In this chaos, you expect me to be calm? All our tempers are on edge, Colonel. I pray you have patience. But how much longer? Try to understand that everyone is under a strain. Washington, more than any of us, he is the most harassed man in the country. Colonel Hamilton. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Colonel, the general is... Yes, very... I know he is. General Washington, sir. Colonel Hamilton, you have kept me waiting ten minutes. I must tell you, sir, you treat me with disrespect. I am not conscious of it, sir. It is true. However, we will forget the matter. General, I regret I cannot forget it. Since you have found it necessary to reprimand me, I beg your permission to retire as your aide-de-camp. Very well, sir. If it is your choice. now, Alex. There's no good raking over dead ash. But I want you to understand, Betsy, and you too, General Schuyler. It was something I did because I felt my honor was impugned. No one questions your motives, Colonel. Day after day, I was sinking deeper and deeper into a rut. 
I was nothing but a brainless parasite. General Washington was quick to recall the affront he paid you. He took initiative to make amends. I would regard returning to his staff as humiliation. It's only your pride, Alice. Only my pride. What else is a man but pride and honor? I have heard humility spoken of as a rather estimable virtue. I will not return to Washington's headquarters, not as his aide-de-camp. But I still will serve. How? I have my commission. I'm going to request a line command. Do you think General Washington will agree to that? He must agree. It's only justice I'm seeking. Father, will you help Alec get the command he wishes? No. I'm sorry you feel that way, sir. I'm a soldier, Colonel Hamilton. My code is very clear on one point. A soldier never questions, never argues. He follows orders. Alec. It's a lovely night, Betsy. Come, sit here with me. It's late. It's never too late to look at the stars. Do you understand me, Betsy? Much as any woman can understand a man, I, I think I do. Tell me, then. What am I? You are, above all things, a romantic. Your heart is in those stars up there. You dream of pageants and glory. It's a man's dream, Betsy. If once, only once, I can test myself by the raw test of battle, then I would be content. I could write with fire and believe in what I write. But the whole country believes in what you write. I don't. Not yet. Let's say I've written to Robert Morris in Philadelphia. What can he do? He's the most influential member of Congress. I've told him I'm coming to Philadelphia. He must help me get back into uniform. It's the only thing I want to do. Colonel Hamilton, this is a matter between you and General Washington. I can't interfere. I'm not asking for office of special favor, Mr. Morris. I'm only asking to serve the country in time of war. You can serve the country, Colonel. Right here in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia? Yes. We desperately need men of talent to advise Congress on matters of finance. Your letters to me outlining a plan for the creation of a national bank are proof that you have an extraordinary grasp of the situation. Stay here with me. Mr. Morris, don't you understand? The country is at war. I want to fight. I'm sorry, Colonel. I repeat again, I will not interfere in this matter. I see. I've taken up too much of your time as it is. Good day. Betsy, my mind is made up. I've finished with this farce of being an officer without troops. I'm resigning my commission. Don't do it, Alex. What else is there left to do? Washington will Someone's never... Someone's coming up the road. Who is it? I don't know. Soldier, I think. Soldier? Probably carrying dispatches for your oh. father. Oh. Colonel Hamilton? I'm Colonel Hamilton. Message from General Washington, sir. Washington? Let me have it. What is it, Alec? My orders. I'm to proceed to Yorktown and join General Lafayette. That's what you want, Alec. Sergeant. Colonel... My respects to General Washington. Tell him I am proceeding to Yorktown at once. And that is the plan of action, gentlemen. Once we have this last redoubt in our end, Cornwallis will be entirely surrounded and he will have no choice but to surrender his army. And as I'm sure you know, that will mean the end of the war. Are we clear on all the details? Yes, yes sir. Right. The action on the left will be in the nature of a feint. The attack on the right will be the coup de grace. Baron de Vieux-Menil will have command of the left and the command of the right, Colonel Grima. That will be all, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. General Lafayette, sir. Yes. General, hasn't there been an error in the assignment of command? An error? Yes. I'm senior to Colonel Grima. As I understand it, I believe the command on the right should be mine. Uh, yes. Perhaps a word of explanation is due you. It is in a sense a reflection of your ability. Let me assure you of that, Colonel. But Grima has been with me throughout the campaign. He knows precisely how I expect an operation of this kind to be conducted. Nevertheless, General Lafayette, I am senior, and I believe I am fully qualified. I am sorry, but I desire that Grima lead the attack. May I have your permission to take the matter up personally with General Washington? That is your privilege, of course. Naturally... I shall obey whatever orders General Washington sees fit to issue. General Washington will 
see you now, sir. Thank you. Colonel Hamilton reporting, sir. Hamilton, sit down. You... You're looking well, sir. Am I, Colonel? I wish my feelings might correspond to my looks. I'm very tired. General, sir, I've been wanting to say this for a long time now. I deeply regret my actions in the past. I hope you will have the goodness to charge them against my youth. I have undergone the crises of the young myself, Colonel. And even now, how often I yearn to be back in the field with my troops. Not nailed now to a desk and smothered by detail. Let us both relegate the matter to things forgotten. How's your wife? Very well, sir. I'm glad to hear it. I know she is as grateful to you as I am for consenting to my return to active duty. I always intended to assign you to active duty, Colonel. I was merely waiting on the proper opportunity. When a vacancy occurred on General Lafayette's staff, I was only too happy to give you the assignment. Sir, the final attack on the British position is set for tonight. I know that. It may end the war. General Lafayette has assigned Colonel Grimard to lead the attack. For my part, sir, I feel that the command rightfully should be mine. Oh? On what basis? My rank is senior to that of Colonel Grimard. Yes, that's true. You are senior. I appeal to your sense of justice, General Washington. I beg you to assign me the command. Well, that is a very difficult appeal to deny. But why is it necessary to deny it, sir? I'm not... I'm not fit to lead the troops. Of course you are. But... Well, Colonel, let me explain my reluctance. This action is one of calculated danger. You are a man who has already exhibited such extraordinary genius for statecraft. I feel I'd be doing the country a disservice by exposing you to danger in this attack. General Washington, I'm very grateful to you for saying that. But I can't stay behind while another takes upon himself the risk. You certainly understand that, General. Yes, Colonel, I do understand that. May I have the command, sir? I believe you've had some experience transcribing my orders, Colonel. Indeed, I have. Very well. Prepare an order for General Lafayette. The command on the right goes to Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Hamilton. Remember now, bayonets only. I don't want a musket fired. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll sneak up to the redoubt Indian fashion, as close as we can get. Then watch me for the command to charge. Right, sir. Yes, sir. It's the last nail in George the Third's coffin. Let's hammer it in tight. Ready now? Yes. Sir. Forward. Quiet. Quiet back there. They've seen us. They've seen us all right. Up now. Up and charge. Forward. 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 The redoubt was captured, Cornwallis was trapped, and the war ended. Alexander Hamilton returned to his beloved Betsy and to a career of wider and greater service to his country. Once again, his pen flamed and his words inspired. From the fountain of his genius came victory in the fight for ratification of the Constitution, stabilization of the infant nation's economy as the first Secretary of the Treasury. Yet... For this strange man, there was one great moment he remembered to the end of his life. One beyond all the honors that were his in the years that followed. That moment at Yorktown, when he commanded the right, and America won its freedom. Thanks to Jackie Cooper and the Cavalcade players for tonight's story, Ready on the Right. And now Bill Hamilton, speaking for the DuPont Company. Accidents that injure people and destroy property 
are often caused by carelessness, and training can help prevent them. Today, the frequency of disabling accidents is 20% less than it was 15 years ago. What's responsible for this improvement? Well, for one thing, we've learned a lot about how to prevent them. Industry has contributed a great deal to better safety, and the National Safety Council, holding its 40th Annual Safety Congress in Chicago this week, has done much to make Americans safety conscious. The American worker today is safer at his job than he is away from it, and there's a good reason why. Few homes or communities can match the abundance of safety apparel, equipment, and attention to safety that industry provides. The DuPont Company has been a leader in industrial safety for many years. Out of 114 plants, laboratories, and construction projects, 75 went all through last year without a single time-losing injury. Three of these units have held their perfect record for 22 years or more. Safety plays an important part in the creation and production of all of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was written by Robert Mason Pollock and Herb Tunick. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zoller. With Jackie Cooper in tonight's cast, you heard Rosemary Rice as Betsy, Arnold Moss as Schuyler, Ed Jerome as George Washington. And this is Cy Harris reminding you to be with us next week when the DuPont Cavalcade will present That More Girl, our star and lies. The DuPont Cavalcade of America came to you tonight from the Belasco Theater in New York City and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Thank you.